Okay, so let's have a look at the file structure that we get when we download something from the RD Textures homepage. So we're getting an ambient occlusion map, uh, which we can use to enhance the shadows maybe a little bit more later on if we are not completely satisfied. A bump map, uh, of course. We're also getting all maps in 4 and 8K, so we can choose if we really want to go uh, full resolution or maybe just a half resolution, maybe to save some, some RAM and uh, stuff like that, depending on your machine, of course. Um, then we're also getting a color map, we're getting a depth map, which we can use later on uh, for displacement, of course. Color map goes into the diffuse channel. Uh, then we have a glossy map, uh, which we can use, of course, in the specular channel. We're getting two different ones. Uh, we're getting a normal glossy one and a high glossy one, uh, really depending on how much we want to have those roots, in this case, want to have how much, how much light they pick up, uh, how much highlight they will get. Then it also comes with a normal map. Uh, if you may be working with Unity, uh, Unreal Engine, uh, Cry Engine, you name them, uh, you can use those maps, of course. And then we're also getting a roughness map in 4 and 8K, uh, which we can use in the glossiness channel or in the roughness channel, really depending on which render engine you're using. They're all called differently. Okay, so these are basically uh, the maps that we are getting, and I will show you now how to set them up correctly. In this part, we will just simply set up a basic plane and a light so we can see a little bit better what's going on in the scene. So let's go to Plugins, Arnold, and let's create an Arnold light. Uh, best would be in this case a quad light, which is basically an area light in this case. And let's rotate it here a little bit, holding down Shift, left mouse click to rotate it. So it snaps a little bit better. And then we pull it a little bit up. Let me rotate it a little bit down. And then we create a null object, put our light in there, and as soon as we turn now the null object, this light should perfectly rotate around our object. And this should be it for this part. Alright, so in this next part we will just simply check a little bit the render settings. Uh, so let's go, let's click here on this little button here, edit render settings, and let's set this here to Arnold render. Um, we can leave this here uh, basically as it is. Arnold is not really, really complicated. This is why it's also loved by a lot of people, so it's really, really easy to use. And let's maybe make a render test here. As you can see, I also don't have a full version of Arnold, so this is why we see here a little bit of Arnold... Um, what is it called? Copyright uh, thingies uh, flying around here on my screen. Shouldn't really matter, to be honest, for this tutorial. So let's maybe up the light here, the intensity a little bit. Uh, let's go here to main and let's maybe put the intensity here to 3. And let's see what we get. We can also use the um, Arnold IPR if you want. So let's jump here to IPR window. Okay, so let's maybe go up here a little bit. Let's maybe go to 5. Let's maybe put it up to 10. So we really get a lot of light. Let's maybe even put it up to 20. This should give us enough room so we can definitely see what's going on. And I think this should really be it for, for the basic settings. Um, just intensity to 20. Everything else we can really leave. Um, we could, of course, play a little bit here with the samples. Um, but as you can see, it looks pretty clean right now. So we can change this later on if you run into any problems. All right, catch you in the next part. So here we will set up the displacement. So basically what we need to do, we need to create a new uh, Arnold shader. So let's go shader, Arnold shader network. So we're really building our shader from the ground up. And um, let's go here, open network editor. And here we can search for all kinds of, of things, for images that we want to load, for displacement, um, for color corrections and so on. So let's just simply type in displacement. And we will go for a normal displacement in this case. And this should not go here into the Arnold Beauty. We should have the output of the displacement, of course, to the Arnold displacement. So let's go, let's drag and drop this here. And then, of course, we also need to load our displacement map. As you can see, we can't load anything here. So we also need an image that we need to load. So let's go texture, Arnold shader texture image. Or just simply type it in here. And then we can search for it. A lot of stuff is going on here on my desktop. Uh, sorry for that. <laughs> uh, clients, 
choice and we will load the roots to texture so let's go here to our displacement map so the depth map 8k of course so we get the best quality out of this and then we will just simply drag and drop this here into the blue and we want to drop this here into the displacement of course so this should basically it and let's drop the shader here onto the plane and let's start up our IPR and as you will see we will not see much right now this is because Arnold does not work this way so we will not see a lot as you can see it's already starting rendering but it looks really really crazy right now so this is uh, kind of a shame but what can you do so what we need to do is we need to uh, first of all let's make this plane maybe editable and let's put a uh, Arnold tag on it parameters then let's maybe set the displacement height here to uh, let's say a normal value let's maybe put this here to 10 centimeters so the displacement is almost gone and still looks extremely weird so what we need to do we also a lot of render engines just simply uh, do this for you as soon as you activate displacement uh, Arnold doesn't do it so we need to uh, have a little bit more subdivisions on this plane so this placement can really uh, be can be seen in its full potential so let's uh, switch this here from type to cat clock from none to cat clock and then here with the iterations we can give this more and more subdivisions so as you can see with one subdivision it already looks okay but we don't see much let's move up this here to three as you can see we're getting more and more detail in here but still doesn't look too perfect let's move up this to five so we're getting a lot more detail now and i think we just will go one more iteration just to be 100 percent fine so six iterations should be just fine for this and this is how you set up uh, rd textures in arnold or at least how you set up the displacement map uh, in Arnold with RD textures. So in this chapter we will talk about the roughness and specular and so let's just simply search here for a standard material that we need to set up now uh, in Arnold and let's connect the output here to the Arnold Beauty and we need also need two channels for now so we need the specular color and also the specular roughness and we need to set the weight here of the specular to 1 otherwise the specular will not be considered whatsoever so let's set here the weight to 1 and let's load two image textures because we need one for the roughness one for the specular so let's load the roughness for the roughness let's rename this quickly also so we really know that this is the rough map and let's also load our specular map so glossy 8k in this case and let's rename this here to spec okay perfect and let's drop this map here into the color specular as you can see right now we have 100 glossiness here as soon as we add here the specular image it will not pick up so much light anymore this is why it also seems a little bit less glossy and now we can connect the roughness map here as well now this should give us our final look so as you can see not a lot of reflections are going on uh, here this is also because this was shot on a dry day so don't wonder about that uh, this is just simply how this image or how this picture was shot if you want to have some kind of rainy day shot i will show you a little bit later on how you can create that um, but this is how you set up basically the specular and the roughness map and in the next chapter we will talk about uh, bump mapping Okay, so the bump map is really easy. Let's just simply type in here bump, uh, which is pretty much straightforward, of course. And let's drag and drop this in. And we need to disconnect here now our standard shader. And let's connect the bump here to the Arnold Beauty. And let's create here two channels. First of all, we want to load, of course, our bump map. So we need an image here again. So let's load our bump map here 8k and let's connect this here to the bump and what we also need because our standard because we also want to see our specular map and our roughness map of course we need to um, create here a second channel and which is just simply called shader and then let's connect the output here to the shader and this should be it 
now we should get back our specular, our roughness, and now we also see our bump map. So if we zoom in here a little bit more, you will see that this bump map, of course, uh, will create a little bit more detail, really, really good detail. So let's maybe, so you can see this a little bit better, let's maybe up this here to 10 centimeters. So as you can see, this adds a lot of detail, really. I think 10 centimeters is really a value that you never should go for. This will look a little bit creepy. Uh, in the end, I think a value of something between 0.3 and 1 centimeter might be just fine. So I would just simply leave this here basically at 1 centimeter. I think this will give you a really, really nice, uh, at least just simply more detail. Um, let's see if I put this here down to zero, you will see we are getting rid of a lot of detail here. I'm really losing a lot of detail. Let's maybe let me search here for some kind of root here on the floor. Let me zoom in here a little bit better so we can see how much detail the bump really adds. So this is how this root now looks without bump. Let's maybe add here 5 centimeters. So let's go a little bit extreme so you can really see the difference. So as you can see the bump really brings in here a lot of fine details. Let's maybe bring this down back to a normal value of 1. Like I said, something between 0.3 and 1 might be just a good value. Really depending on how close you are to the roots or to the displacement map itself, of course, and you can also adjust if you have an animation, this bump height accordingly. Okay, so this is how you set up the bump map, and in the next chapter, we will talk about color and ambient occlusion. So let's jump right in and let's load another image here, which we need, uh, and let's load our color map. And let me also rename here the bump quickly that we created before. Let's just simply call this bump. And let's call the new image here color so we really know where our images are and we need to create here in the standard thing a new channel so we're creating a diffuse color channel let me also bring the weight here to one and let's connect here the color image to our color diffuse channel and this will finally give us here our final image without them in inclusion for now, but as you can see, it looks really absolutely stunning. Um, these are the best displacement maps in the world right now, I, I think. So they need to look stunning, that's for sure. So let's rotate the light around here maybe a little bit so we can see how really, how nicely this map really works. It looks absolutely stunning, if you ask me. Um, still impressed, this is why I'm smiling, still impressed some sometimes from these maps. Um, Okay, and let's also bring in our ambient occlusion before I really um, get off topic here. Uh, let's load the ambient occlusion map 8K. And if you want to enhance our shadows now a little bit more um, on this picture, we can of course do this here with the ambient occlusion map. So let's just simply here the color image. Uh, let's add a multiply and let's rename our AO image here. And then just simply connect here the AO image to the multiply of the color image. And as you will see in a second, this will really enhance our shadows a lot. Yeah, already giving us this little bit more here, which is really, really cool. And yeah, this is basically how you set up the color image and how you connect the ML occlusion map. And in the next chapter, I will show you how we can control those maps a little bit further. Okay, all right, so welcome to this last chapter. And now we'll show you how we can um, adjust those maps a little bit inside of Arnold. So let's just simply search here for a color correction. And let's bring this color correction in. And let's disconnect the ambient occlusion map for now from our color image. Let me, bet, uh, let me add here the multiply again to the color image. And let's connect the color correction here the output to the multiply and he will need an input and our input will be our ambient occlusion image of course and what we can do now with this gamma control here we can easily control a little bit the behavior of this map so we can add a little bit more shadows a little bit more darkness a little bit less darkness which is kind of cool let me rotate this light here a little bit so we can see a little bit better what's going on in the scene yeah, maybe like this. I think like this we will get some really nice shadows. 
So if I switch this here to a gamma of 3 in the color correct, we should not get uh, any enhancement whatsoever. So this is just the color image right now, which we will see. Um, and if we switch this down to 0.1, you will see we will add a lot of ambient occlusion here. Way too much, of course. So as you can see, it's really turning extremely black. But let's maybe try it with a normal value of 0.75 or something like this. And this will already enhance our image a lot here. Um, if I disconnect here the ambient occlusion map, well, let's maybe rotate the light here a little bit further so we can see a little bit better what's going on. Let's maybe also bring the light up a little bit more. Let's maybe bring the intensity up to 100 or something like this. And let's bring the ambient occlusion map maybe down to 0.5 so we really can see a lot of difference. So this is what we see right now with the ambient occlusion and as soon as I disconnect here the map you will see this is how our normal image does look. Let's just simply look at the... Oh, the color correct is still in there, sorry. Uh, let me undo this. So let's check this image again with ambient occlusion and let me disconnect here the color correct of course. And this is how our image looks without ambient occlusion. And this ambient occlusion map cannot also cannot only enhance the shadows, but it can also um, help to hide some details from the displacement map. Because if you have a really, really high displacement and really go freaky and nuts with the displacement, and you also are really close up, no matter how good a displacement map is, and these are probably the best displacement maps in the world, um, you will always get some irritations, some problems uh, with the displacement as soon as you have a really, really high displacement, of course. And this ambient occlusion map can also help you to hide those details maybe a little bit more, which is, I think, a really, really cool thing. Okay, so let's add back up the ambient occlusion here. And let's set maybe the gamma back to 1, so we're getting the normal ambient occlusion output here, which was made by Chris. And we can use the same technique here, the color correct also, of course, if you want to here in the roughness channel, maybe. So let's maybe connect this here. So color correct input. And let's connect this here. Uh, not here. Let's leave this here the output. But here the output, maybe here to the input. And the output here to the roughness. Okay, perfect. And now we can play here with the gamma as well without making any changes in Photoshop. I mean, of course, we could also work with those maps, uh, maps in Photoshop, but this is how you can do it really, really quickly inside of Arnold if you want to. So let's maybe give this here really a high gamma of 3 or something like that. Um, so as you can see, we have no glossiness here whatsoever. Let's bring this maybe down to 0.1. Let's say we have a really, really rainy day and we want to have... A wet thing, wet roots here. This would be maybe too wet. Let's maybe bring this here to 0.3 or something like that. I mean, really depending on what kind of shot you're really after, um, you can change this gamma here around uh, pretty quickly, pretty easily inside of Arnold. And uh, yeah, look for a result that you are looking for, of course. So let's say if you want to make a rainy day, you might want to go with a gamma of 0.6 and it already looks a little bit wet and a little bit rainy. And you can use the same technique over and over again, of course. Also, you can play around with the saturation here if you're using it on the color image or with the contrast. And you can use the same technique here on the specular image as well. Okay, so this is how you set up RD textures inside of Arnold. And I hope it was a little bit helpful for you guys. And so yeah, thanks for listening. Bye-bye.